mean, it's, 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 it's an industrial revolution. It's the fourth or fifth industrial revolution, whatever you want to call it. It could be seen in the context of blockchain. It's got to be seen in the context of quantum computing um, and the metaverse, actually, the much maligned metaverse, which I think actually has more, more there uh, than people think. You know, around training, around medical, around sports, entertainment, music, music work from anywhere, work from home. But um, so, if you look at it in that context, AI is part of the your armory, and it is having a significant impact already. Uh, we, we look at five areas that that we think AI affects our industry. The first is what you touched on: visualization and copywriting. What took us three weeks can take us a matter of hours. That's a two-edged sword because we sell hours. We should be selling outputs, but we sell hours. So clients say, you know, you're more efficient now and we want a slice of that. So that's one part of it. That, that is having an impact. The second area, which is also having an impact, is what we call hyper-personalization. So the Netflix model, the shorthand for a data-driven model, iterative model where you're continually refining creative. You don't, you don't go out and shoot a, a TV commercial, expensive TV commercial for three to six months. What you do is you, 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 you have an insight from the data, you create content at scale, assets at scale. You might yeah. one and a half million different assets for a campaign. Now we can do it at multiples of that. So that's the second area. The third area, which is very controversial, is media planning and buying. Um, we, we've already seen it with Pmax. We've already seen it with Advantage Plus at Meta and Pmax at Google, that they're starting to provide programs and algorithms for media planning and buying for small and medium-sized businesses. That will spread to enterprise over time. But you won't need 10 to 15,000 people in an agency network uh, into implement. Uh, a lot of the work that's done currently, as you well know, is sort of semi-automatic uh, or semi-automated or even manual, uh, and it's labor intensive. That will go. So the platforms will have closer relationships with clients and will rely on us, clients will rely on us to tick and check what's going on, be resellers, if you like, for the, for the, for the platform. So that's the, the third area. That's and turkeys don't vote for Christmas, so the holding companies, I think, are, are, are going to be somewhat surprised. There's about 250,000 people who work on media planning and buying, and I think that's going to, you know, you won't need, you'll be able to do things in a much more effective way. The algorithms will produce better information, and the human input will be considerable, but looking at the machine-based information. That's the third area. The fourth area is general efficiency. I mean, we have this arrangement with um, exclusive partnership with NVIDIA and with AWS and Adobe on outside broadcasting. So if you, you know, typically, if you were doing an outside broadcast, you needed a truck for about eight or nine million dollars. You amortize it over five years, so it's an annual cost of about one and a half million dollars. We can do a, a AI-based solution, cloud-based, for about a hundred thousand dollars a year. So massive reduction. I'm told in cost, we're talking about 90% cost reduction. So uh, that's the efficiency area. And then the final area, the fifth area, is what I call democratization of knowledge. I mean, the 900 people that we have working on our largest client, Google, uh, if we can inform them about what is going on in our relationship you know, on a secure basis, and that everyone knows what the other 899 know, that's a very, very powerful tool to build cooperation and unity inside the business. And so it flattens the organization. And, uh, so I think, uh, yeah, AI, I mean, I've, I'm a little bit disappointed by what I see here. I thought we would see more earth shattering, you know, intelligent fridges, um, uh, transparent TV sets, that's pretty impressive. Um, but, but having said that, uh, ProVision goggles, you know, from Apple, uh, Apple uh, the Ray-Ban from, from Meta. I mean, it, it, there's stuff there, but, but it's still, it's in formulation. Now, we're seeing the start of monetization. We've seen, you know, what Google is doing and Microsoft are doing and trying to monetize chat GDPT and BARD, etc. But we're in the foothills of it. Um, 
the downsides people worry about is, you know, what does it do for jobs? I, I actually think it will be a net destroyer, but, you know, it's controversial to say that. And a lot of people believe it will generate more jobs. I'm not, I'm not so sure. I, I think, you know, I go back to when I was struggling with economics and John Maynard Keynes wrote, I think it was in 1933, that uh, we the Industrial Revolution or, or automation would mean that we would have more holidays. Well, I think we'll have more holidays and work-life balance will change. Anyway, that sort of feeds in to what we're seeing. I mean, people's attitude to work and work-life balance has shifted, uh, maybe accelerated by COVID. Not, it doesn't originate with COVID. It was accelerated by it. It was already there. And Gen Zers are more focused on, on work-life balance and, um, and, and purpose and being happy, uh, which may be a good, a good thing. So for old farts like me, it may be not so good.